I am Heidi Benjaminson, your host of Confidence Coaching, a podcast for mothers of teenagers who want to stay off the teenage emotional roller coaster. Life isn't a spectator sport. Success comes to those who show up every day with a pocket full of courage, grit, and a little sparkle. I'm glad you're here. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 112, Faulty If Then Beliefs. I am glad you're here, and thank you to those of you who are spreading the podcast episodes to your friends, sisters, neighbors. I love how many of you reach out and you tell me how. Even though you don't maybe have a teenager or maybe you aren't married, you are applying these tools because it doesn't matter who we are dealing with in our lives. The more anchored we are in our choices, in our emotions, the better we feel. We like how we show up, which is awesome. Today, I want to talk about faulty and limiting if-then beliefs that we've developed over time, and now they rigidly rule our mind and emotions, and these keep us stuck if we don't question the beliefs and decide if we really like them, if we really believe them. So this is how these beliefs work. It's just like the if-then statements from math class of decades ago. Math is very absolute, very black and white, all or nothing, which is why I think I liked it. The problem arises when we use math equations to run our emotions and our life, because life is very not black and white. Life is all about the middle gray area. Remember in math, we believe if the few variables exist in the equation, then the result is always a certain exact thing, exact result but life isn't exact. So, okay, let me give you several examples of how if-then beliefs show up and limit our thoughts and emotions. And I'm saying these examples the way I hear them said to me by clients and how I hear my own brain offer the thoughts. You'll see how then the if-then fits into the belief equation. If my child doesn't go to or graduate from college, they won't be successful or happy in life. A good mother doesn't work outside the home or any version. Children will thrive the most if their mother isn't distracted by interests outside of her family. We have to eat dinner together to be a close family. My spouse had an affair, so we have no choice but to get divorced. So those are four examples. Notice how in each one, our brain has opinions and assumptions about what one thing means or doesn't mean. Our brains make assumptions and have opinions so they can conserve energy and don't have to reassess every single choice or person of every minute of the day. So opinions do serve us well some of the time, but when they create pressure and expectations of what we expect from our children, from our spouse, from ourselves, we have to stop and look at those beliefs from each angle. I think in general, society has really loosened up a lot of the rhetoric around women and their opinions for work and the presumed effects working or not working has on our children. I just heard someone who's about 15 years older than me talking about the mommy wars of the 90s. I know it was real. You were in one of two camps. The world is a bit less judgmental now. Even so, as you make decisions about your family, your education, your career, or financial options, watch the limiting if-then beliefs you subconsciously hold on to. Do you think one way will be worse or harm your children? Why is that? Make your brain prove that the opposite is true. Now, I recently heard a woman share how she had a belief that good moms never spend a night away from their children and how this belief blocked her from getting the breaks and rest and emotional and physical refills that she needed. She had wished she had taken trips with her sisters and friends and how much she thought these would have helped her be more secure with her children. She sees the limiting belief now and is making changes. Now, this doesn't mean someone's belief is wrong or what one person believes needs to be what you believe. We just want to question why we think one thing automatically leads to another. And 
what we possibly are not seeing. Your brain says A plus B equals C, but we need to question if other variables will equal C. And this can be so useful to our lives, to our emotions, to our expectations of everyone around us. In this case, the woman questioned, why do I need to be with my children each night? How does this make me good? And she realized she will show up as a more fulfilled and rested mother when she gets her own timeouts. My family ate dinner together growing up almost every night. I think it's such a good habit, a good tradition. But for a long time, I put way too much pressure on my family to do this, especially during sports seasons or when someone was working late, because I had this faulty belief that if we didn't eat together, we wouldn't be as close or connected. I had to loosen this up and remind my brain that connection can come in a variety of ways. We can do it most nights at dinner And we can create connection in other ways as well. By defining what I really wanted, which was connection in this case, I could then see all the other ways that we could get it as well. Okay, let's pivot to our children. We believe so many limiting equations, limiting thoughts about what will make successful adults. We believe they have to get good grades in high school to go to college. On this, I have good news for you. So many colleges will accept your children no matter what. We also believe collectively that college is the ticket for a successful adult life. Now, I believe that too. But what if your child drops out of college or doesn't want to go? This is when we have to examine. Well, college is just one avenue to get an education. Some children learn more in job settings and get excellent work experience. College is a very good path for learning how to work in groups, how to get along with people, how to meet deadlines. And there are other paths to doing this. So if we're anxious because a child is taking a different path than the popularly held definition or the popular if-then belief of success, we want to question what the real outcome of the equation is that we're looking for. One of my dearest clients manages her brain all the time around her children who are not in college while her friend's children are. She makes her brain acknowledge how much her children are learning and growing in other ways. She has disproven her faulty belief that if they don't go to college, life will be hard. Turns out life is just as hard or just as easy as we make it. We can't hang all of our hopes on one path. I listened to a woman share how it took her years to leave a very emotionally abusive marriage because she believed a family has a mother and a father married to each other. And if not, it wasn't a full family. She thought if she left the narcissistic and abusive husband, she'd be tearing up her family. Once she saw that in reality, her family would be more whole. After a divorce, she had the courage to go through with the divorce. She had to dismantle the rigid if-then marriage and family belief that she had. And the opposite can be true. I recently read about a couple who have a beautiful healed relationship that was on the verge of ruin. One spouse had had an affair and the other thought that automatically that meant they'd get a divorce. The therapist showed the wife who had just assumed divorce was inevitable, that she had multiple options if she wanted to explore them. And she shared how incredibly grateful she was to have changed her beliefs, actually to destroy them, and how much different and better and richer her marriage is because she saw new paths to the destination that she wanted to get to. Now, in my church, we highly encourage the young adults or late teenagers to serve 18-month or 24-month missions for the church. We also highly encourage and teach living strict morals. And in our teachings and more in cultural beliefs, we project what serving a mission will do for our children. If they serve, it means then they will be happier or stay active in the church. These limiting if-then beliefs end up being pressure-filled and judgment-filled beliefs that don't serve as parents or serve our children. Now, while I'm a huge fan of these service missions and I served one myself, it is just one of the ways to reaching what I think is the real goal. We can become calmer and more relaxed mothers 
who project love and confidence when we see the limiting barriers that we unintentionally put on the path to successful adulthood. Now, this doesn't mean we don't still have paths and values we teach our children and encourage them to follow. It does mean, though, that we teach and encourage from a place of hope and grace and acceptance rather than fear, judgment, and anxiety. And when we relax and realize lots of paths go to the same end goal we're hoping for, we drop the control freakishness and we allow our children more agency in their choices. Now, let's look at our expectations of other people. Some of us think if a spouse loves us, then they will give us physical gifts for our birthday or a holiday. Or we have expectations of others. Maybe it's an expectation that if a friend is a close friend, they'll text or call weekly. If someone else does this, then it means this outcome on the back end of our relationship or what it might mean that they think about me. These limiting unspoken rules end up hurting us if we use them as the driving force behind our actions and words with others. In these cases, we are insecurely reading how other people act to figure out how valuable we are to them or to others. Before COVID, most of us had strict if-then beliefs on work. It has to be work in an office. It has to be 40 plus hours a week and so on. We had strict if-then beliefs about school. Only a few colleges had remote classes. I'm guessing you have children doing online music lessons now. Job interviews are via Zoom, and so much more. COVID has forced us to redefine the equation to get the same solution. I challenge you to notice how many times a day you are doing something just because you believe A plus B is the only way to get to C. Or you're stressed because if your spouse or child doesn't do this one thing, it means this other thing will or will not happen. Let's question these things. We may still keep our beliefs. We certainly don't want to change our values. The key to relaxing the ubiquitous stress and tension we all feel is by taking off our limiting if-then blinders and seeing so many other options that are available, especially if people in our lives are choosing those other paths, those other options. Let's open up to the magic and chance that good things, even amazing things, can come from a variety of places. I love math. I always will. It's how my brain works on default. It's just that life isn't a math problem. My kids' lives are not a math problem. Instead, we're on an exciting journey. We're learning, and I want to be open to the magic of so many unknown variables in the world. That's it for this week. If you would like personalized weekly private one-on-one coaching to manage your emotions and like the example that you are being for your family, sign up for a consult call at HeidiBenjaminson.com. A confident mother is the greatest gift to her family, not a perfect mother. Our families want us to feel confident, anchored, and calm. I can help you uncover this version of yourself. Have a great week.